there are some really good Rolex authorized dealers out there in the world. And then there are some pretty bad ones. Uh, and it's unfortunate that that, you know, that happens. Those bad ADs, they sell out the back door. They engage in bundling. They tell you up front and they don't make any secret about it. Yeah. If you buy that Cartier, you buy that IWC, you buy that Breitling, you buy that Tag Heuer, you spend 20 grand in other brands in our store. Sure. We'll sell you that sermon at retail price. We'll get you that sub you're looking for. And it's just stupid. It reflects poorly on Rolex as a brand. And it just makes the situation that's already, I mean, not a great situation. It's not ideal. It just makes it worse. And nobody likes it. At least no self-respecting watch enthusiast likes that type of situation. So there are certainly bad ADs out there. But I like to say most Rolex authorized dealers around the world, they're not like that. In fact, they hate that type of practice. They're good authorized dealers. They go about business the right way, the proper way. They want to help their clients. You know, they want to do a good job. They're honest. Most ADs are good ADs for Rolex. And so here's a situation that happens on the customer side that drives the good authorized dealers crazy. They don't like it. It's frustrating. And it's surprising at how often it happens. And if you do it, you got to stop. You're just being dumb. You're just, let's just jump into it. Let me tell you what happens. Imagine a customer, they walk into a Rolex authorized dealer and inwardly they're looking for that ceramic Panda Daytona. They're looking for that Kermit. They're looking for that, you know, GMT Master 2 Pepsi. They're looking for the hard to get models that really increase in value on the secondary market. And there's nothing wrong with wanting, you know, a Tiffany OP41 or a blue stainless steel sky dweller. There's nothing wrong with that. But these individuals, they don't want them because it's a grail watch or they want to use and love that piece and hand it down to posterity decades into the future. No, they want to buy those hard to get watches because they want to sell those hard to get watches. They want to make a quick profit. If you bought a, a Panda Daytona at retail at about 12 grand, you could sell it for over 30 in today's market, which is kind of crazy to think about. So because of, because of this, there are opportunistic, smarmy individuals looking for these hard to get models, not for great intentions. They don't, they don't even intend to wear and use and love these pieces. So this is what happens. They go into the authorized dealer, but of course they don't tell the AD that they're looking for these watches. No, they feign interest in something else. They go, oh, you have that Pearl Master? You have that two-tone ladies date just with the obscure dial that's been sitting in the case for a little while? Yeah, I've been looking for that one for my wife or my girlfriend. You know, I've been looking for a present. They act all nice and excited and they're, they're putting interest into a, a model that will certainly sell but it doesn't have the demand anywhere close to some of those hard to get other Rolex watches, which is what those individuals are really after. So they'll feign interest in something else like a Pearl Master or a precious metal Datejust or something. And then the authorized dealer, they kind of get excited for half a second. They go, ooh, you know what? I have something in the case and this person seems like a really nice individual and I can make them happy. I can do my job. And then the kicker happens, that smarmy opportunistic individual they go, okay, yeah, I'll buy that watch. But what can you do for me? Wink, wink, like under the table. Yeah, I want the next ceramic Daytona you get. That one's mine. In fact, we can do this together. I'll buy this watch for my girlfriend, but I gotta buy that Daytona for me, you know? And they try to bundle. They, essentially, they try to do what the bad authorized, authorized retailers you know, the occasional bad guys, the bad apples, what they engage in, they, they take that same concept and practice and they try to bait a good authorized dealer into doing that. And you know what? It doesn't work. And it drives the authorized dealers, the good ones, it drives them crazy because they value honesty. They value transparency and they don't want their watches to go to flippers who just want to pump it into the secondary market, just want to make a quick buck. That person will take a loss on that kind of hard to get two-tone date just, but they'll make so much in the hard to get model that at the end of the day, they're making money. That's why they do it. Uh, so it certainly happens and it's so frustrating. I can only imagine for those authorized dealers that just want to help their clients. You know what? 
be open and honest with them. If you're looking for a Cartier, say, I'm looking for a Cartier. If you're looking for a Breitling or a Moonwatch or whatever it is, tell the authorized dealer what you're looking for. If you're looking for that Pepsi or that OP41 mustard dial, tell them what you're looking for and be open and transparent. Devil's advocate, if those smarmy individuals were honest and they'd say, yeah, I, I want to get that Daytona, I want to get that Sky Dweller, I want to get that Sermit because I want to sell it, obviously they're not going to get those watches from the authorized dealer. Uh, no. So, I mean, I, I guess they're trying to do whatever they can do to get some of these hard to get watches for as little as possible. And that obviously is only going to take place at the authorized dealer at retail price. Now, I'm going to leave you with one thing, guys. Wouldn't this be hilarious if that good AD said, okay, yeah, you can buy that Pearlmaster, you can buy that two-tone Datejust, you can buy this Cartier, you can buy this IWC, you can buy this, you can buy that, and they just lead that that uh, smarmy individual along and make him spend, you know, like 30 grand in the store and then not sell them the Daytona. Like, that would be poetically ironic. That would be some true horological justice. And I think that would be hilarious, honestly. But of course, you know, a good authorized dealer would never do that. They would never entertain that idea. I just think it would be kind of funny. So guys, this is a practice that happens and most authorized dealers are really good. They don't like this practice. So if you do it, just stop. Don't, don't do it anymore. That's the video today. I'll have another video in two days. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.